Hey everybody, welcome back to Why Not RV. On this week's episode, we're gonna take a more in-depth look at some advanced information on RV electricity. If you wanna learn more and make less mistakes while RVing, be sure to hit that subscribe button below. Drop a comment and let me know what uh, you wanna see in some upcoming videos. Hit that like button. Uh, we also are now on patreon.com uh, backslash why not RV. We have our website, why not RVUSA.com. And we also have a Facebook group where we're doing a strictly zero politics, zero bullying, only positivity, uh, trying to help each other out on there. So make sure to check that out. I'm going to put a link in the description below for all those things. This is going to be a much deeper look into some RV electricity. Uh, next week, we're going to actually talk about just batteries because we're going to do my battery upgrade, which is going to lithium. And you will not want to miss that. You won't believe what I paid per amp hour for these new batteries. So be sure to stay uh, tuned next week to check that out. Last week's video, we talked a lot about the AC circuit and how that basically runs all your you know, AC electronics and everything like that. And the DC circuit runs all your lights and your pumps and stuff like that. Um, check out last week's video if you want to learn the basics of that stuff. But this week, let's talk about DC capacity and how, you know, one battery versus two batteries versus three batteries and how big they are and what that really affects inside your RV and how you can run things. Batteries are usually rated in a uh, cold cranking amp, CCA. That's just like an easy way to know, you know, what size the battery is. Um, there's a, a thousand different ways, you know, it's called group 27, group 31, you know, 4D battery, 8D battery, all those different things. I'll tell you more about the amp hours and its capacity. But generally speaking, a lot of lead acid batteries and normal batteries all are uh, rated off of cold cranking amps. Now, it doesn't really tell you anything um, just off that. So you need to figure out your actual amp hours. The amp hours is what tells you how much juice you actually have in that battery and what you can use it for. So for example, I'm gonna go ahead and put a uh, thing on the screen right now um, that it was, is gonna be the formula for converting cold cranking amps, which is CCA over to amp hours. Because when you're looking at a regular battery and it says 750 CCA, that doesn't really tell you anything about how long the battery will actually last you when you're trying to run your refrigerator or your pump or whatever it is that you're trying to run or an inverter. So you gotta figure out your amp hours. The amp hours is the best way to know what you're gonna be able to run and for how long. Once you have your amp hours figured out and you know how many amp hours you have in your battery bank, um, the next thing you need to figure out is what is usable out of that, okay? Because you have multiple different types of batteries, right? We have lead acid, we have AGM, gel, lithium. There's several different types of batteries out there. So uh, for example, lead acid batteries are only supposed to be taken down to 50% capacity. So even if you have a 100 amp hour lead acid battery, that's only 50 amp hours that you can actually use. So on my batteries, for example, they are AGM and they're considered deep cycle batteries. They are technically capable of discharging to 80%. However, whenever you do that kind of thing, you're gonna shorten the life cycle of those batteries. So I try and stay to that 50% rule. So even though I have, you know, I think a little over 500 amp hours of a battery in, in there, I can only use about 250 of that. Now I have my battery monitor set to around 300 just because I, I, I know that I wanna stop at 250, but I don't like the alarm to go off unless it gets real dangerously low, but that's just me. So you gotta figure out what kind of battery you have, lead acid, AGM, uh, you know, lithium, and then figure out your usable amp hours. Again, lead acid, AGM, you're only supposed to go down to 50%. Uh, lithium, you can go all the way down to 100%. You can take them all the way down to zero. So, uh, you know, and, and next week's video is going to be strictly about batteries. So we're going to take an even deeper look into that. So stay tuned for that. But now let's move on to uh, what that kind of thing can power in the RV. So by having a inverter like I have in here, now this is a multi-plus inverter, which is an inverter-converter combo. Um, but with that inverter, it powers the entire rig. Um, well, I shouldn't say that it actually only powers technically half the rig, but I have my, so my, my, uh, uh, breaker box distribu uh, distribution panel wired up. So it runs everything I need it to run. Um, but with that thing on, I can plug into any outlet. I can turn on all my TVs. I can turn on one air conditioner. Um, I don't have the washer dryer on it. And I don't have the main living room AC on it just because those things are really, really big power consumers are going to suck the batteries dry anyways. So I like to run the generator when I run those things. So 
you need an inverter to be able to run your uh, batteries off, uh, to, to run things in your RV off your batteries, you need an inverter. And uh, the other thing you need, that you're really gonna need is a battery monitor to know how much juice you're really using. Uh, so I just walked over to the breaker and I turned the power off to the RV. So now that the power is off in the RV, my inverter automatically turned on and is automatically powering everything in the RV. Um, so it's starting to use power. Now there's not anything on inside, so it probably isn't using hardly any power at all, but let's pull up the battery monitor and take a look at it and see what it's doing inside. So right now the draw that it has is basically just off of some lights. You know, it's, it's not really that much. We can go ahead and turn the lights off and see what that looks like on the battery monitor. We can come over to the air conditioner and uh, let's turn on just the fan at first and see what happens when we turn the fan on. So with the fan on low, you can see what it's doing in the battery monitor. Or we can turn the air conditioner down and get it to turn on. And now you can see what it's doing in the battery monitor as well. Put this back up. We'll turn the fan back to auto. So let's see what else we can run off just the batteries. Um, let's see. We'll go ahead and uh, let me turn some lights on here. So let's turn on, uh, let's try the TV and see what kind of amps that thing draws. Magic, magic, magic. And again, right now I, I'm the, the power is just running strictly off the batteries through the multi-plus, through my inverter. And uh, now we're looking at the battery monitor so we can see how much juice we're, we're really using. You can now you know be able to look at the battery monitor and say, okay, my TV uses three amps. Now you know that that's what the TV uses. Just good information to have. So we'll turn the TV off. Let's try, uh, let's turn on the coffee maker because I know that's a pretty big power draw. We'll turn that on. And we'll take a look at the battery monitor and see what it's doing in there. And lastly, just for fun, let's kick the microwave on and see what it does to the batteries off of uh, the microwave. So you can see now by having a nice inverter and a nice battery monitor, I can run pretty much everything I need to run inside the air, inside the RV off of my batteries except for the main air conditioner like i said i only have one air conditioner hooked up to the multi plus um but it runs it it turns it on it runs it um, it could run it for maybe an hour and a half two hours right now off my current excuse me current batteries um because i think it pulls like 130 amps somewhere on that area we'll look at the battery monitor and uh show you guys how that what you know you, you'll have already seen that by now but um so you know it pulls 130 amps well if i have you know 250 amps of usable amp hours um, it means I can run it for like, you know, an hour and 40 minutes or whatever that is. So, um, it does run the AC. It just doesn't run it very long. Now, again, next week's episode with the battery bank, we're going to almost 700 amp hours and that's all usable. That's lithium. So it's going to change, uh, drastically, you know, I'll be able to run an AC three times longer, uh, than before, probably four or five hours, uh, off of just those batteries, which is gonna be pretty cool to be able to do if I need to. Uh, I'm still probably going to run the generator, though, whenever I want to run an air, air conditioner. So anyways, that's an inverter. That's what a battery monitor does. And that's how you know how much power your batteries can give your RV to get you, uh, you know, through boondocking or through whatever you're doing. But you need to have some source of measurable uh, usage. You know, you need that battery monitor to know what's going on uh, inside your batteries. Let's talk about real quick, now that you've been draining your batteries and you're sucking the juice out of them, how can you recharge your batteries, okay? Um, there's there's a bunch of different ways to do that, right? Um, obviously, the, the number one thing is a converter, okay? All RVs come with a converter in them already. Um, my unit, I changed over to the Multi Plus, so my Multi Plus inverter-converter combo 
um, my other converter that's built into the RV, I just have unplugged and not wired together anymore. But that converter is what takes your AC power, you know, that shore power and charges your batteries. So that's obviously the number one way of charging your batteries. Uh, you can also have a DC to DC battery charger like I have where I plug in to the bed of my truck. I, I ran a, a cable. I'll put a link in the description below to that video. Um, and I ran a DC to DC battery charger that then charges my batteries while we're driving because your little trailer plug that plugs in uh, doesn't really charge your batteries hardly at all. It barely keeps the batteries, uh, you know, level with whatever you, you started with. So that's not really going to charge your batteries. Um, you need a DC to DC charger to be able to do something like that. Um, and then obviously the next big thing that a lot of people love about RVs and want to add, but it's pretty pricey, solar. So a solar charge controller, which uh, I'll show you what one of those looks like here. Hold on. Let me pull it out. Ugh, this thing's heavy. Bam. Solar charge controller. Um, this is going to be uh, two weeks from now. Uh, we're going to be installing the solar charge controller. But anyways, a solar uh, system, you know, a solar setup is what else is how else you can charge the batteries. A lot of people say, oh, how much solar do I need to run my RV? That's not ever the case. The, the solar recharges your batteries, okay? Your solar does not directly power anything in the RV. Um, now we're talking about RV stuff with house stuff. You can put micro inverters and you can have it run directly to the RV, but that is not a common practice with RVs. So we're not even going to get into that. Um, but for RV solar stuff, it just think of it. The solar strictly recharges your batteries. Your batteries are what is giving juice to your system, uh, you know, through your inverter, through the DC circuit, whatever it is. Uh, the solar is only to recharge it. Uh, and then obviously the last thing would be a wind turbine. Um, people do do wind turbines. I've seen a few of them on RVs. Um, they're not nearly as practical as solar, um, but it's totally up to you and your style of camping and how much you use it. The benefit of a wind turbine obviously is at night, it still provides power, whereas solar, you're done. Once the sun goes down, you're out of, you're out of luck. So a wind turbine uh, is actually something I've been like considering and thinking about to do uh, you know, down the road just to keep a trickle charge going in overnight. I don't even need that much juice. I just wanna be able to you know, keep the batteries topped off overnight. Um, I'm probably not going to do it, but we'll, we'll see how this next uh, trip goes with the new solar system and stuff like that. So those are ways to recharge your DC circuit. <laughs> That's it for this week's video. I hope you learned something. Um, if you did, drop a comment, hit the like button, do something. Um, so make sure to subscribe to the channel. Again, next week's video is going to be the battery bank upgrade. It's going to be pretty intense. I'm going to show you guys some in-depth stuff on, on batteries and how all that stuff works. I know we talked a, a bit about it today. But uh, we're going to do a lot more in-depth stuff with strictly the battery system next week. So I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching Why Not RV. Bye.